We're gonna run through a filler panel for an inside corner cabinet. And this is for a, an Ikea install, obviously. I, I find the inside corner filler to be one of the hardest things to do, just in order to get it strong and stable and to measure it and everything else. So I'm gonna run through basically three scenarios. Um, the typical, the one that we have here that's kind of unique, give you basically just a, a bunch of options that you know you can throw some ideas around. Anyway, what we have here, obviously a cabinet, doors or drawers, doesn't matter what this is here. This cabinet is part of a peninsula and it's not your typical inside corner because the door functions or the drawers, doesn't matter, is on that side. And then this cabinet and our drawers on this side, okay? One thing I'll point out and I'll, I'll have in another video as well is when you're planning your kitchen, you have to be careful of if you have doors, drawers, and the handles. Now, this scenario will work and it's hard to visualize right now, but the handles that are gonna be on this front, if let's say this was a little narrow 15 or 18 and the handle was right here, when I pull this open, this drawer would hit that handle. So if I, I didn't plan this kitchen, this is my buddy Tim's, but I would space this out more and you have to allow room to crisscross those. So I'll have another video on that and it's part of my full series as well on just how to plan an Ikea kitchen. That's fairly important. But to get back into the filler, you can see how I like to do them fairly custom and I like to bring the fillers out three quarters of an inch from the front so that your drawer front is nice and flush and it looks like a custom job, right? You could cheap out and do these flush to the actual cabinet but then your drawer will sit out past and it looks goofy. So anyway, I wanna show you what I had planned originally, and it would have worked better if I had more space right there, is, so here's my first plan. So this is a top view of what we have. Now what I was gonna do originally is I was gonna put this filler on first and then I had this filler put on first. I'll show you after what I did in order to prepare for this, but I was just gonna put a long one in here. This would have been a cut edge, cut edge, doesn't matter. This is factory here. My brad nails go through here, there, so you don't really see the brad nail holes. Same thing here, I was gonna install this first, and then I was gonna screw from the inside of the cabinet into there. I'll show you how to prepare for that. And then this one would be literally just a little L. Now I could have done that this way or I could have actually added a piece of rip down two by four or something to give it more support. So it all depends on sizes and how crazy you wanna get. Sometimes I go overboard. But anyway, so to prepare for this, my first scenario that I was hoping to work out is this little bracket usually sits in the top corner here and protrudes back or on the back side of the cabinet for the rail system. So I took that off and same with this white little nugget. It sits at the bottom typically for the rail system and the spacer system. But when you start getting into islands and peninsulas, I kind of modify the Ikea system to make it work better. But really at the end of the day, I just take a three eighths piece of plywood and I put some L brackets on the inside and I get that secure. So then if this would have worked out, this would have been a panel coming in through here and I could have sec secured that enough to be strong. And then the problem is, is this one won't work because by the time I put this filler panel in, this one on this face, I can't brad nail through because it's only gonna be about a quarter inch. So what I'm going to do is I've switched my mind and I'm gonna do it a little bit basically opposite. And this is the reason I'm showing you this is just to give you ideas on how to do filler panels because there's a million ways to do it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to slip this down there. I'm going to, I'm going to actually take this out and brad nail it. So I'm going to brad nail that in there and then I'll do this panel. So it butts into here. And then probably what I'm going to do 
is throw some chunks of two by four or something here. And then I can just screw from the inside and, and get the cabinets to actually suck tight. I think this is good enough to throw in, right? Yeah, and because I've already pre-clamped and pre-screwed these, I don't have to clamp again. The old holes will work nice. Now that that's in place, I have this one already here. Now I can just measure this other filler. Three and five sixteenths. Three and five sixteenths. Double check. I know a lot of you metric guys are giving me hassle on YouTube. That's okay. I understand. See, this gap is just literally a hair bigger than the bottom, but the bottom's secured. I can actually fasten this a little tighter. So I'm just going to leave this at three and five sixteenths. And then if I want a block of wood here, I'll just make it a squeak smaller. I might even just go three and a half. Yeah, I'm going to go three and a half there. Cause if that's a little smaller, that's okay. When the screws come in, it'll clamp it tight. So filler panels cut. We're going to just dry fit it before I go crazy. Start nailing stuff. So it fits nice, it's tight at the bottom. Like I said, the top will be a hair loose, but I can push that tight. Now, the other thing that I was thinking about is, one of the important things for me is making sure that this panel has backing. Because if I just rely on brad nails here, if somebody hits that hard enough, it'll just pop it in and it's too hard to fix later. So what, I done, what I've done is I've put a date or a notch in that two by four, just to go around this little funky corner so after I brad nail this on, I'm going to slide this in. Uh -oh. See measurements are very snug. Oh man. Come on, man. Come on. Yeah. So I'll put this, nail this onto this, then I'll install the two by four, I'll slide it all in, and then I can screw it tight from this cabinet and grip it all together. Now, if you've never seen any of my other videos on the Ikea install is, I always leave this one with the finished face a little proud because the corners are rounded over. So I'm just making sure that it's overhanging Roughly the same amount. <clears throat> and the other thing, little trick. This is the thicker style panel, like 11 sixteenths versus the half inch. And it just gives me more room to brad nail into, just as a little tip. And the other thing is, is just to keep in mind is you can overlap these other directions. Like this one can overlap here, finished edge here, and this one could bat, butt into the back. So there's not one way to do this. Now what I can do, you'll never see this. I can screw into here. You'll never see these screws. And then I'll just screw into here. And I don't need to actually fasten the filler because it just needs backing to prevent it from getting knocked in. Come on, baby. I have marks so that it overhangs three quarters of an inch. Yep, 
And I don't need the clamp because I already fastened that on. Also another tip is special order yourselves some inch and an eighth screws. In this case, it doesn't matter. I can drive through the back, but if you're doing from a three quarter inch gable into a half inch panel, inch and an eighth work the best. And that's if the, the panel's exposed on the other side. This is nice and secure now. And if you come around, that edge is nice and clean. She's gonna look pro. Now, finally, I'll give you another idea on the typical inside corner. This is not typical. Let's give you some pointers on an inside typical corner. Okay, so I, I fell into this situation not long ago on a pantry unit and whatever I'll save you all the details but this and like I said the inside corners are the trickiest but again I had to come out like this with a panel then what I did is I brought this panel out through and past and you know, obviously I won't go into all the details, but then this one went like that. Okay. Now I pre-assembled it. This was one piece. This was another. And then in order to make it fit the way I wanted is I actually assembled it and screwed it all as one. So then I ripped down a two by four and I put it as backing there. And then I screwed through there into that to secure and make it all one unit and secure and then I slipped it into place and made it work but like I said you can overlap the corners differently as long as you always have a finished edge it doesn't really matter how you do it and if you can find an easier way to do an inside corner feel free these are just ideas for you guys to use um, yeah so with that thanks for tuning in and hope you found it helpful